Alrighty, so in this short shoot, I'm just going to introduce you guys to the Fluid Surface Influence Actor and then be going through a few properties of that actor um, to see how we can affect our fluid surface with it. So the first step is to actually bring an, um, an Influence Actor into the scene. So we're going to go up to our Content Browser. We're going to go across to Actor Classes and do a search for Fluid. And we can see our Fluid Influence Actor here. And I'm just going to drag and drop a Fluid Surface Influence... A fluid influence actor into the scene and straight away from here it doesn't look like it's doing anything but that's actually because we're not close enough for the simulations to be working so that's part of uh, the sort of inbuilt optimization of the fluid surface is that if you're too far away you won't be seeing anything so we'll just get a bit closer so we can see how this is affecting the surface I might bring it a bit closer to the shore that stage Okay, so you can see we've got these sort of lovely automatic wavy ripples happening. But let's go into the actor itself to look at the properties to see how we can change those things. So I'm just going to select the actor itself and hit F4 to bring up its properties. Uh, now we'll just mention at this stage, of course, you do need to have simulations um, happening for, for this to work. Otherwise, it, it's not going to work. You can do it with the detail method as well. Um, but of course, the effects won't be quite as um, striking. So as we work our way down the properties, um, the first one we come across is active. This is literally, is our, our actor doing something or is it not? Uh, we want it to be, so let's turn that back on. The fluid actor tab here gives the opportunity to, um, to assign a specific fluid actor that you want this uh, influence actor to affect. Um, so if you were to have two fluid actors that were fairly close to each other, oh, sorry, uh, two fluid surfaces that were close to each other, and one influence actor, um, you would find, depending on the, uh, the max distance that we've got here, um, you might find that it's affecting both when you only want it to affect one. So you'd have to create a separate influence actor for each and assign the specific fluid surface um, to each actor that way. Now the influence type is on wave which is what's doing this sort of up and downy kind of effect here. We have a bunch of parameters that we can affect the wave here so most are pretty self-explanatory so I'll just go through um, a few of them. Strength obviously is going to be how much it's being displaced so if I bring that up to something ridiculous like 180 you can see just how much the surface is being displaced now which is quite a cool effect. So I'll bring that back down 40. Now the frequency is just going to be the frequency of the waves. Um, if I bring that to zero, we should actually end up with a standing wave. So yeah, we can see we just got a little bubble of water there, which we can do with the, the sphere effect a bit later as well. And if I were to double that, you can see we've got a lot more frequency in the waves now, but I'll bring that back to one. Uh, wave phase, um, I'm not sort of going to worry about, <clears throat> I haven't really noticed it do too much, so I'll leave that one. And the radius, uh, again, is pretty self-explanatory, so if I double that, we should see the effect. We've got a much bigger, or I guess a, a wider wave, wave now. Let's bring that back to 50. Okay, so the next one we can look at is... Um, doing the raindrop simulations. So we're going to change the influence type up here from wave and we're going to change it to raindrops. Now at the moment, uh, this setting here, I'm not sure if yours is on by default, but it's got raindrops fill entire fluid. So if I'm kind of like looking at the fluid, I'm not really seeing anything happen, um, mainly because it's trying to work out these simulations all over the entire surface of the fluid, um, and much of that, you can see I've just got a ripple there, much of that is being worked out uh, at a distance that I can't see, because UDK has optimized the, um, the surface for me. So I'm going to turn off fill entire fluid now because my fluid is uh, my surface is way too big for that effect to be really effective. So now that I've turned it off, we can see I'm just getting raindrops within the area of influence. <clears throat> so I'll just turn the uh, the raindrop radius down, which is going to create smaller raindrops. So we'll bring that down to one, so we get tiny little raindrops. That might be a bit too small to get the effect. So let's go back up to about four, I guess. Uh, raindrop strength, I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to up that to let's say 10. Let's move a bit closer to my actor. And rate, let's go 100. Okay, I'm still not getting anything, so... 
don't have to reduce the area that it's creating the simulations in. No, it's not going to do it. Maybe it's just my radius is too small. Huh, okay, there you go. Bear with me guys, I'm just going through a few settings to try and find, get the right sort of effect here. So obviously way too many raindrops. So let's bring that down to a rate of 10. And that's getting better. Probably still a bit strong, let's bring it down to 8. The radius, let's go to too small. Okay, so I'm starting to get something that's looking a little bit like raindrops here. Bear in mind, of course, everything that you're doing with your um, your influence actor here. So we have a few settings that we can affect here, but it's also going to be affected by the settings you've got naturally on your fluid surface. So my settings uh, that I've got is that the, the ripples are moving very quickly across the surface. Uh, so in this instance, um, the raindrops really aren't cutting it. I'd have to go back into the fluid surface, do some tweaking on the damping to try and get the right sort of effect with the raindrops. But um, I'm not going to do that for this tube, but that's definitely something you can look at doing yourselves. So the next uh, influence type that we can come across is flow. Um, I'm going to skip over that just for the moment and go to sphere and we're going to come back to flow at the end. Um, just flow can be a little bit tricky to, to get the effect happening. So we're going to go to the influence type and change it to sphere. This is what I was talking about before. Uh, with your sphere you can pretty much create that standing wave effect anyway. So if I go to down here to our oops to our fluid sphere, I'll just move the actor closer to the surface and you can see as I go under the surface it starts to actually uh, sort of come up as a bubble and if I go above the surface it starts to depress the surface. So it's a pretty cool effect and I guess like if you were to, if you're going to have something um, hovering over the water or something it might be a really cool effect to, to kind of put in there. So I'll just change a few of the settings in the sphere. Um, so the outer radius is pretty obvious. If I change that to something like 600, we're going to have a much wider depression. So you can see I've depressed a lot more of the surface now. And if I go under, we can see it's bringing a much larger bubble <coughs> above. And sphere strength, let's go... Should we change that to... Change that to something fairly large, just so we can see the effect. So again, the strength is obviously going to be how much uh, it's been allowed to be displaced. So if I bring that all the way sort of up there, and say it'll disappear when I zoom out, but if I go and play now and have a look, I get close enough for that. Oh, there we go. So. That's fun. All right, let's go back into the properties now and we'll start looking at flow. Um, just if you have your influence actor a bit close to the surface and you're having trouble selecting between, you can always turn uh, translucent selection on and off. If you turn it off, uh, it just means that we won't be able to select our translucent surface here, which means it'll be much easier to select this guy. Uh, again, F4 just to bring up the properties. <coughs> Get that out of the way. And let's start having a look at flow. So flow is going to be a little bit hard to demonstrate on such a large body of water as this. So I'm going to create another uh, fluid surface so we can better see the effect. So content browser, actor classes, and I'm bringing a new surface actor into the scene. And we're going to want another influence actor as well. That's only going to influence this one. So we'll drag him in. Now if we go to the scene tab, uh, we get another odd thing happening here like we did with our, um, our post-process volume where they don't show up immediately uh, in the scene. So we want to go file, save all, and we'll see it's now been propagated with the, the new info. So 
So now I'm going to assign uh, this influence actor to this surface only. So I'll click on the influence actor and hit F4 to get the properties. Now under the fluid actor tab here is where we're going to put it in. So we need to know the name of our new fluid surface here. So actually I'll just click on that to get its name. It is actor 3. So just go back to this guy here. Now with this open, um, just makes it a bit easier for me to make sure that I type this correctly. So it's fluid surface actor underscore three is the one I want to assign to it. So just hit enter. That should be all good. And we can see now it's starting to affect it. So I'm actually just going to uh, flip this surface. Oh no. Alright, that's the actor. Flip the surface. Probably easier to show the um, the flow effect like this. Okay, so I'll just grab my influence actor again and go to the properties. Okay, we'll change from wave to flow. I'll just get this out of the way because I'm not going to need that anymore. So the idea with flow is that you kind of get these um, these little ripple generators that will move in a, a specified direction. So I'll just up some of these values to make the effect a bit more obvious. So I'll bring the strength up. Let's go 100. Um, I turn the frequency down. It should make it a bit more obvious. Alright, so if we have a look now, you can see these little kind of um, center points where they're generating ripples, but they're also moving in a direction. And we can affect the direction that they're moving in by affecting the influence actor here. So if I were now to rotate this and point it sort of in the upwards direction, that's going to tell all the ripples that they need to travel in that direction. Uh, this is the red arrow we're looking at, by the way, not the green one. The green one's just an icon. So if I were to reverse to 180, we should see the ripples now moving in the opposite direction. So we can see them coming down now. So uh, I'm guessing that's just a, a way to, to simulate f uh, flow. So if you were to have a stream or something, you could have the impression that... Um, the waves are kind of, or ripples are kind of moving along a certain flow line. So, pretty cool effect. Um, you can have a lot of fun playing with the different parameters to get some, some cool things happening with that one. So that's pretty much the basics of um, using the Fluid Influence Actor. So you've got your um, your presets here, Flow, Raindrops, Wave, Sphere. You've got all your parameters here that you can um, make changes to the way the effect works. And also, as I showed you on this little one here, um, the way to assign uh, one specific um, influence actor to one specific surface. So you can have different effects happening on different, surface through, uh, different surfaces throughout the scene. Um, so in the next shoot, I'll be showing you how to do buoyancy of objects or how to fake uh, buoyancy of objects in fluid surfaces, as well as how to make the surface interact with K actors. So lots of fun, and I'll see you guys in the next shoot. Cheers.